Hey, what's going on? This is Trustworthy Tech, and today we're going to be doing a rebuild of my polycarbonate Think 6.5. This is a version 1 of this board. There was a group by recently for a version 2. I've been trying to get my hands on this board for quite some time, so I was really excited to finally pick it up. I did some retooled Cherry MX Blacks. They're spring swap to 62 grams, lubed with 205 grade 0 and switch filmed. So I'm really excited to try those out. This is a hot swap board too, so I know that I'll be popping switches in and out of it. And I'm not really decided on what key set I'm gonna be using as of right now. I got this white badge that I think might pair well with my GMK Mizu, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and start breaking this board down. Yeah, I probably need to buy like a new set of tools, make that a little easier. That wrench was a pain. This is the PCB completely separated from the casing. Got your hot swap connectors there on the back. The same hot swap connectors that was on my KVD67. Here's the top case. Those are the screws that hold that badge in place. I'm gonna leave that badge there. I'm not gonna change it out for this video. Check out my very fancy red plastic bowl screw tray. It works the same as the Rama tray, which I was too late to secure inventory on on the website, but it works. And you should definitely be putting your screws somewhere safe or you're gonna lose them on your desk. Today I'm gonna to be using the C3 equals stabilizers purchased from the key dot company. I've got some black stabilizer wires, a small set of screws to put them on the PCB and the washers to protect the PCB from the screws. So real quick, if this is your first time assembling stabilizers, you're going to have the inner housing and the outer housing. You're going to want to put the two holes side of the inner housing facing the opening on the outer housing. And when the wire goes in, it's going to go into the lower chamber of that inner housing, which will allow for that inner housing to move up and down freely. Okay, so just like our switches, we're gonna be lubing our stabilizers with 205 grade zero. A lot of people are using a Crytox XHT BDZ grease on the stabilizing wires. I don't have that for this video, so I end up just going a little heavier on the 205 grade zero. It shouldn't fully halt your project if you don't have these heavier greases for the wires. It is the preference of a lot of streamers, a lot of builders in our community. I did end up buying that grease just to try it out later on down the line, but I haven't felt that not having it has had any real significant impact on the sound or feel of any of my boards currently. Here's a real quick look at putting the wire into the stabilizer housing. It just slips in like that and clicks down into the housing itself. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this step a couple of times on the other stabilizers and not bore you to death with that. Not gonna lie, next to lubing switches, this is probably my least favorite part of building a keyboard. These little washers going onto these screws are very hard to hold on to. I have to use tweezers, but even then they fly off the end of the tweezers if I put too much pressure. It was a little bit of a challenge getting them on the screws and onto the back of the board. Took a few attempts, definitely cut that all out. <laughs> it's uh, not something I ever wanna see again. It was really stressful. Mission accomplished, and onwards with the build. Here is the beauty of building a hot swap board. The stabilizers were easily the hardest part of this build. I'm just gonna reassemble the case now, put the PCB in, then I'll pop the switches in, put the keycaps on, and we're good to go.
And here is the semi-completed product. We've got our polycarbonate think 6.5 board with our retool Cherry MX blacks. It looks great. I love the way the black switches just look on the polycarbonate. Might be an idea for a color scheme later on down the line. Fuel wise, I thought it felt elite. These 62 gram springs are really nice. The switch itself is really, really reactive. I built this for gaming. I wanted something that was just a, a nice, light, colorful, fun board. And that's exactly what this is gonna be. Before I put my switch caps on, I'm just gonna go ahead and double check that this board is working again in switch hitter. Occasionally with these hot swap boards, you'll get a bent pin on insertion, but uh, it's not such a big deal to fix. Most of the times you could actually just take it out and rebend the pin back into shape, put it in. I don't recommend doing that over and over again. Obviously, if a pin gets stuck in the hot swap connector, you're gonna have a little bit of a bigger issue. But uh, once I get this board actually connected to my computer, things start lighting up and we're good to go with the switches. And then from there, we're gonna take it right into the sound test. So stay tuned for that. 